All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, it has been a week since I put the food on and did the uh, condensing of the hives up here at my neighbor's bees. I want to thank you guys very much for all the comments, just overwhelming response to the last video. And uh, we've had a lot of great ideas and a lot of uh, sort of themes I'm, I'm seeing in the comments, sort of three options for this hive. And the first option was to, was to dispatch the queen in the weaker hive, the green queen, the 2014 queen, take the, the hive over there and just put it on top of the stronger hive and call it a day. Just co combine it and, and be done. Benefits of combining the hive are obvious. Uh, it's more of a safe option. I would I would just take the the, the little brood and and workers and stuff that are that are in the weaker hive, put them on top of the other hive, and then I'd have three mediums, pretty full, uh, to go into the winter with one one year old queen. So uh, odds are better for getting through the winter with that option. Option number two was to try and keep that that weak hive alive as a separate hive with the queen intact. So I'd either be keeping that alive just as a hive in the box that it exists right now, just in the medium box, and, and hopefully they can draw out a little more comb and get a little more storage. Uh, or I just get a nuke box and put them in a nuke box, like a too high nuke box, and keep that alive for the winter and just see if we, if we make it. Um, the, the great thing about that is if we come out of uh, the winter with a living nuke, then I'm off and running and I can just immediately start a new hive with that. By trying to save the small hive, it's going to be a big challenge and I'm going to be doing a lot of feeding and taking a lot of care. Uh, our winters are about six months long, uh, of pretty solid, the, the bees aren't going to be flying for six months. So it's a long winter, they need a lot of food, they need a lot of, of insulation, and uh, you know, it, it just, to, in, my, in my inexperienced mind, uh, I, I don't see how a, one nuke is going to survive the winter in our, in our winter. So combining definitely is appealing to me uh, for safety. If I don't combine and I am able to keep that nuke or that, you know, one medium box alive for the winter, it, it could be a great experiment for me. It could be a, a, a great experience. Um, it would definitely take a lot of work and you know if I'm successful I'm gonna come out of it with two you know two hives ready to go in the spring um, if it dies it was an experiment so there's there's that way to look at things so there was a third option which was floated in the comments by a user named not cool uh, and a couple others also threw this out there uh, but the idea is to combine the hives as far as putting them together, but keeping a queen excluder between the boxes so that we keep the queen on the bottom living and with her bees, and then the medium box will go on top of the other hive with a queen excluder so that queen could have her bees and the queen would stay alive. This would keep the top box warmer because it would have the, the warmth from the bees below it, keeping it warmer. Uh, and the workers would be able to go through that excluder to get honey and to get reserves if they need it. This sounded great on paper. I've done a little reading about it, and I haven't found a lot of information on exactly how to do it. So I would love to get some feedback and some thoughts on that idea, which is sort of, it's a two-queen hive scenario, but it would be for the winter, and it would be mainly just to keep that other box warm and alive for the winter. So my questions are, uh, if I did this and I put the, the two mediums from the stronger hive, you know, as one hive on a bottom board with, with one hive, an excluder on top, then take the weaker medium and put that on top of the excluder, and then put the inner cover and then a top cover. My questions are, if I do feed in the springtime, or if I continue to feed through the fall, I, I would put the feeder on top of the weaker medium. So those bees below aren't going to get a lot of food unless they crawl through the excluder and then up into the other medium. So that's kind of weird. The other question I, was, do I want the workers from each hive able to go through that excluder? I don't want the queens, obviously. 
but do I want the workers to be able to grow through to either hive or do I want to exclude all the bees and just put literally put a screen between the two hives so that this hive stayed you know as a hive and this hive stayed as a hive and I was literally just sharing the heat from the lower hive into the upper hive uh, that also has complications because then how do I feed the lower hive so uh, it, it, it doesn't it sounded good at first it sounds good on paper but I don't know exactly how to do that for a for an entire winter and how do I feed the bees so that they all get food so please uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you know of a place to look and read about this or if it's been done or if this is some kind of new thing that that just kind of got made up in my head uh, I'm not exactly sure how to do this so please comment below and please let me know what you think about that idea so again the options uh, combine the hive option number one option number two uh, either make a nuke out of that hive or just keep the box intact and try and keep it alive for the winter uh, and option number three is to do the two queen system with some kind of excluder between the hives so those are my choices what I'm going to do right now is open these hives, have a look. I'm going to see what they've done over the past week with the food that I left them. See the condition of the hives, see the condition of the bees. Uh, look again for some varroa. I didn't see any varroa last week when I first opened these hives. So I'm going to look for that. I'm going to look for wax moths, any small hive beetles. I'm going to do a deeper inspection on the bottom boards because last time I did see some worms on the bottom boards which looked like mealworms and I'm I, looking this week I did some research and it was probably wax moth larva. It wasn't small hive beetle larva because it was too big. They were like an inch long. Um, so probably wax moths in the weak hive. I did not look at the board on the stronger hive so I'm going to look at that one as well. And then I'm going to feed. I'm going to put two new fresh gallons of feed on both of these hives and I'm going to leave them for one more week. This is supposed to be a pretty mild week, like 60s Fahrenheit, maybe 70 degrees by the end of the week and pretty clear. So they do have another week here. There is not a lot of forage, but they're going to have two to one syrup right in their hive to sort of chow down on and to store. So I'm going to give them one more week and then make my decision on what is the next step for these bees. So let's get into the inspection and hopefully we find good things.